Friday on CityCast Madison. The Madison bus system is getting a glow up. Just around the corner on June 11th, Madison Metro Lines will change to make way for a brand new bus rapid transit system, or BRT. Your bus route, stop, and likely even bus number will change in the next few weeks. The city says the redesign will be huge and light years ahead on equity and efficiency. We speak with city transportation planner Mike Chekvala to bring you up to speed. It's Wednesday, May 24th. I'm Bianca Martin, and here's what Madison's talking about. Mike, hello. Hello, Bianca. So uh, we've heard a lot about bus rapid transit the last few years, and a BRT system is coming to Madison. The major change to public transportation has created some controversy and confusion. So, Mike, what exactly is BRT? Right. So bus rapid transit, BRT, is a combination of transit enhancements along a single corridor. So new buses, new stations. Uh, so, you know, you're, you think about your typical bus stop. It's it's a just a sign mainly on the side of the street. So the BRT stations will look more like a light rail or streetcar station. If you've if you've seen that kind yeah. of station, much more substantial level boarding so that the platform is level with the floor of the bus. Uh, nice enhanced uh, canopies, shelters, real-time information signs, and <gasps> oh improved fare collection, all that kind of kind of good stuff. Yes. Uh, it's all designed to make it like you know, a real easier city. To, yeah, easier to use, you know, faster, simpler, you know, more frequent bus coming every 15 minutes. So, you know, thinking about what big cities are doing, uh, you know, you have you have subways, very expensive. A uh, light rail is kind of a cheaper version of a subway, but, you know, light rail projects are often uh, over a billion dollars, um, you know, just unaffordable for mid-sized cities. So sure. cities like Madison and others, many other cities in the U.S. are saying, how can we do something similar to really uh, give public transportation more of a, a front seat? How much does BRT cost, this plan? So this is this plan will will cost about $200 million. Okay. Um, which, you know, it sounds like a lot, but public infrastructure money is uh, <laughs> yeah. everything, you, you, you know, freeways and roads and, and buildings, these things, you know, they, they're not in the thousands, they're in the millions and sometimes yeah. the hundreds of millions. So, yeah. uh, you know, much more affordable than a comparable light rail system would be. Sure. So what makes BRT rapid? So it's so those combinations of improvements, bus only lanes. The stations are about twice as far apart as your typical bus stop, so the bus is, is driving more and stopping less. Uh, priority at traffic signals, so we don't hit every green light, but we, we get some priority at the signals so that we can get through faster and more efficiently. How's that work? So this just makes the traffic signal system a little bit smarter so that if it knows a bus is coming, it'll hold the green light for it just for a few seconds to get it through so that the bus isn't just missing the green light. Or if it's if the light is red, it'll try to just cycle through a little faster. So it's not major changes. You won't notice them, but it does help the bus get through a little quicker. So it looks like a little superpower. I'm excited for the bus driver. It's kind of got to feel good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Bus drivers typically like these routes. It's yeah. they're easier routes to drive. That's yeah. pretty cool. Um, so to be clear, the buses are not going faster. It's not like bullet trains. They'll be coming right. more often. <laughs> We we obey the speed limit like everybody else does. So it's <laughs> it's not that it's not that we're we're physically driving faster. It's all about stopping. The bus spends a lot of time stopping, sitting. You know, we we wait at red lights. We wait for traffic. We wait at the bus stops while people get on and off and have to pay one by one at the fare box at the front. We just it's not about how fast we go. It's about how much time we spend actually going. And so mm. that's where BRT tries to reduce some of that delay. When do the new BRT buses hit the street? We are under construction now. The construction will be done sometime in 2024. The buses will start coming in this year, but they'll kind of come in one by one. And then we need to do some things to get them ready for service. Uh, Late 2024 is when everything will kind of switch over and the new BRT buses will be out and the new stations will be ready. Okay, great. But I want to know about the buses. I, I hear they're going to stand out. They're going to look a little different. 
So there's 60 foot buses. Our typical buses out there are 40 feet. So to have more capacity, we have a, it's called an articulated bus. They have the joint in the middle. They'll be all electric battery buses. So, so oh, no. the joint in the middle, that's the thing that can kind of move a little bit. E- correct. Yeah, yeah. I've been on yeah, those. It's a, like an accordion bus. Yeah. 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 Um, Musical. So, so I'll, yep. Yep. So all electric and uh, that extra capacity, it, it gives people more space, but it also actually has the ability to let us run more efficiently because our main cost is the driver. So if we can have one bus have more capacity, uh, that prevents us from having to put extra buses out on the road and it prevents people from getting passed up. And it's greener. Yes, to have uh, electric buses and not have the, the extra buses out there. So they're gonna it's they're gonna be noticeable because they're bigger and they're gonna be on a specific, you know, route. How often will these new buses run on the upcoming BRT route? The route A, the main route along the corridor, will run every fifteen minutes generally. Evenings and Sundays it'll it'll be a little bit less frequent every thirty minutes. But we'll also have some additional service routes in the middle between about Sheboygan Avenue, Whitney Way on the west side and and Milwaukee Street on the east side, it'll run even more frequently than that. So, you know, every five to eight minutes uh, during the day. Yeah. Can you describe kind of plainly like the corridor, like what that is, what what the route is? Mm -hmm. Right. So if you start by Westtown Mall, we're on Mineral Point Road going east. Then we turn left on Whitney Way. We go up through Sheboygan Avenue and then onto University, going east towards Madison. We use Campus Drive to get into town faster and and, uh, go through the UW campus area on Johnson University. We go through downtown, Capitol Square, East Washington Avenue. We make a slight deviation to serve Madison College, and then we're back on East Washington, and the route ends near East Town Mall at East Springs Boulevard. And then the buses will actually continue in local service to Sun Prairie and to the to the north side, to the American Center. Love it. Love it. And so you also mentioned that uh, there's going to be platforms, so it's easier to get on and off the bus. That sounds like a big deal. It is. I think you'll notice it's a significantly different experience. So all of the all of the doors will be served by the platform. So you'll you can get on and off any door. The buses will actually have five doors on them. Three what? on the right. Yep. Yep. What? Three on the right. <laughs> oh my gosh, like a trolley or something. I don't, I don't know. No. Not like ignore me. <laughs> like a That's, trolley. Who, who am I? Carry well, on. <laughs> you know, three three so three doors on, on the right side like and two subway. doors on the left side. Yeah. So uh, about two thirds of the stations will actually be in the middle of the street in the median. Nice. The bus will run on the left side, and so the left side doors will open. Uh, and then uh, some some stations will be on the right side, so the normal right side doors will open. But you'll be able to just get on and off any door, as opposed to our current buses where you you have to get on the front door. It'll yes. be a different experience. So that's one of the, right the one of the <laughs> even stressful moments if anyone's been to Chipotle and you're like trying to do things really fast. They're like, "What do you want? What do you need?" And it, like, everyone, I did not need to use Chipotle, but I think it's a good good example. <laughs> I have anxiety going through that line. I also would get anxiety <laughs> going to up to the bus and like getting my money out and all those things. That was kind of like the the point for which you know there was a lot of friction, and that's why we're getting these more more doors and also like multiple places to pay. Right. So we're upgrading our fare collection equipment system wide. Right now, you have to either have something like a 10 ride card or an unlimited pass pre arranged, or if you have to pay cash. And if you pay cash, you have to have exact change. You have to have exactly $2 or $1.25 or dollar, whatever the fare is for you. So that's very inconvenient in 2023. That's not the way most most people live anymore. And it's so, stressful. <laughs> it's, it's stressful if you're if you're counting and you you drop your quarters or something. Yeah, we've we've, we've been there. Yeah. Uh, so we'll, we're upgrading our fare equipment, and so there will be multiple ways to pay. We don't have it all figured out yet, but uh, various various ways to pay, possibly mm-hmm. probably with credit cards, phones, and some of those other things that people have these days. And I also saw you're going to have fare boxes like at the station too, right? Like you can pay before you even get on the bus. Yeah. So there will be fare vending machines on the platform. 
So again, rather than having somebody get on the front door of the bus, have everybody watch while they ask, ask the driver, how much does it cost and how, no more free how can shows. I pay for it? So all of that can happen on the platform with a vending machine. You can stand there by yourself and it's a much lower stress environment. It'll be much faster and easier. I love that so much. Um, I also heard that you're changing the numbers that that we're going to a system that has letters, which apparently there used to be a system with letters, but I'm really worried about the number two. Will there not be a number two bus? There won't be a number two bus anymore. Yeah, no. you, we actually had we had letters back a long time ago. Actually, most of our history, we had letters until 1998. Um, so we're, this is a separate project called Transit Network Redesign. This is a project that redraws all of the routes on the Madison uh, Madison Metro system. So totally new routes, totally new schedules, totally new network. And the BRT fits into that. BRT is is the main route, Route A, which will be kind of the backbone workhorse of the new system. But so we have transit network redesign is all new routes starting June 11th. That's happening pretty soon. Pretty soon, yep. Mostly letters will have some numbers. Numbers are generally the routes that don't run all day, um, routes like the 28 and 38. But uh, yeah, so you'll need to figure out a new route, most likely. You know, people love change. Some do. <laughs> some do. Some have trouble with it. This is um, this is going to be pretty transformative, what, what I'm hearing. It is, yeah. So generally, the routes are going to be longer, straighter, less deviation, no more transfer points. So we don't have, you don't have to go through the transfer point, get off one bus, wait five minutes. Hope you don't miss your connecting bus. Wow, that's big. No more transfer points. No more transfer points. Yep. Uh, Totally designed to just make it easier, more convenient, fewer transfers, more frequent. So we're trying to make it easier to go other places in the city besides just going downtown at rush hour. Uh, So the system will help us do that. How are you letting folks know about these changes? Like, how are you going to inform people um, who aren't listening to CityCast Madison? <laughs> mm-hmm. Who's that? Who's that? <laughs> so, so, so for those five people who don't listen to this show. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so we have a, a number of ways we're trying to reach people. Uh, we have an online presence, of course. We've been having meetings. As we get closer, we'll have people out on the street at our transfer points. We'll be on the Capitol Square. We'll be at UW. We'll be riding the buses, going to events, saying, you know. Really? So just so you know, yep. yep. You're having so, humans. Humans, yeah. Going to go stand mm-hmm. at the stations and help people out. I love that. Metro ridership went down during the pandemic. Is is that still the case? No, it's it's up quite a bit. We're not quite to where we were in before the pandemic, but We've rebounded considerably. People are, are mostly kind of going back. I think some patterns will not come back in, this, in the same way, but uh, you know, people are definitely riding the bus again. Mm-hmm. Uh, ridership is, is up. We're experiencing some of the same overcrowding issues that we have in, in the past. And so we're at a point now where we really can't be running that base level of pandemic service anymore. We need to kind of start ramping the service back up again. Mm. And and this is part of the solution. Yeah, this is it's a good time to to make these these changes. It's additive. Well, you know mm-hmm. when the the new routes were announced last year, there were concerns from some riders that their stops will be further away. Like, how many people will this affect? Uh, well, I I don't have exact numbers uh, at my fingertips, but mainly what we're doing is we're taking the routes and putting them more on the busy streets. So that's also where most people live and where they're concentrated. You know, if you think about where the multifamily housing is, where the retail is, where the jobs and destinations are, most of them are located somewhere along Park Street, Mineral Point Road, you know, downtown Madison, East Wash, um, University Avenue, Monroe Street. They, they tend to be sort of close to where these major streets are. That's where most of our ridership is. It's not where everybody is, but it's where most of our ridership is. And so, so we're increasing service in those areas. Some people will have to walk a few more blocks. We're also expanding the ex- the reach of our service. So there are some neighborhoods that have never had real all-day service, such as east of the interstate on Milwaukee Street, Cottage Grove Road, also south of McKee, west of Verona Road, southwest corner of the city. We will 
be able to get to those neighborhoods that we weren't before. You're expanding access. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, we talked to Mayor Satya Rhodes Conway um, about it, and she she basically said, you guys just trust us. And when you see it, it's going to make sense. <laughs> so there's a, a moment where trust is needed that um, this is this is the right way to go. And I mean, I'm I'm it sounds like a lot of uh, innovations for what is an increasing ridership. There needs to be some some changes here. Um, and I, I understand you're going to have ride guides to help people navigate the system. Um, it sounds like you guys are also still working out some of the like fare, like how you pay, um, maybe, you know, including, you know, smartphones, that sort of thing. So there's, you know, it's it's a process in motion. You guys are taking the data in, et cetera. Do you think that the bus rapid transit will like attract even more riders? Yes, absolutely. I, I think there are a lot of people out there where the bus system is kind of invisible to them. They know their buses, they know their routes. Someday, maybe they could figure out where the routes go and how they could use it. But, uh, you know, it's just not something that they use. BRT will be much more visible. So I, I do think that people will see the system and they'll try it and they'll use it and they'll like it. Yeah. That's what we hope anyway. <laughs> tell you i did try to ride the bus the other day and i don't have anything and i went to my piggy bank for change like literally i was like do i have enough do i have enough money and it sounds like um people uh who aren't like as frequent bus riders uh the system is going to be a lot easier to use so totally (laughs) yeah much Um, easier much easier so can you before we let you go can you share like what does success look like when will you know this project has succeeded in its goals? Yeah, so I think there's data. Uh, ridership is kind of the main thing. If we see ridership uh, go up uh, on the new system, I think there will be a, a, a period of breaking it in, right? There will be a period where people won't know what to do, and there will be probably half a year to a year where we'll just have to let the averages kind of average out. But you know, clearly, when it, we want to see more people using the bus, we look at things like complaints and what people are saying out there. We like to see fewer negatives and more positives. So, you know, we're always going to hear criticism and that's okay. But, you know, we'd also like to hear that, that the bus is working better for the people who need it. Well, Mike, maybe I'll see you on the bus. I hope so. <laughs> if you ride, if you ride a lot, you'll probably see me. Fantastic. Well, thank you for giving us the skinny on what to expect from uh, bus rapid transit and all the all the great things coming there. Thanks a lot, Bianca. That's Mike Chekvala, city engineer and transportation planner. If you want to know more about the transit redesign, check your routes or download the transit app. We'll toss a link in our show notes. And here's what else Madison's talking about. Hundreds of CUNA mutual workers are on strike this week. It's being called the largest labor organizing the state seen in over a decade, since Act 10 under the Walker administration. The strike started last Friday and involves around 450 of the office and professional staff in Madison. This comes after a year of contract negotiations. Workers want their wages to keep up with inflation, they want continued access to a healthcare plan, and to continue to be able to work remotely. CUNA is headquartered in Madison and is now called True Stage. It's one of our largest private sector employers. Both sides are expected to meet this week. And while we're on the topic of imagining new realities, this weekend is WISCON, AKA the Wisconsin Science Fiction Convention, the oldest and arguably world's leading feminist sci-fi conference. So Friday through Sunday, there will be loads of presentations, workshops, and parties, and very likely a number of attendees who've transformed into character. If that sounds interesting to you, check out our show notes for a link. That's all for today here on CityCast Madison. I'm Bianca Martin. If you enjoyed the show, why not tell someone who loves reading those advertisements on the side of the bus to subscribe to our podcast. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more stories from around the city. Ciao.